It's Dave Lean here from Six Towns Radio. Hello. Good morning to you. The, the 60s court case and... 60s court case? <laughs> can I remember that? Oh, I'm sure you can. You changed, changed football forever. Yeah, you know. I suppose it did. Well, I didn't really uh, anticipate that this would happen, as nobody anticipated it, I'm sure. Did you sort of go into it in, in a belief that... Um, because you could have just... I mean, you did get the transfer from Newcastle United to Arsenal. I did, um, yes. Did you have to wait long for that? Because I think it was at the end of the 1960 season. And yeah, they, it, was about, it was about then. The PFA sorted everything out. They wanted me to carry on. If they, well, they asked me if I would carry on with the case because they were down to the last few more, I think. Uh, with all the lawyers fees and what have you so um, I said yeah we might as well carry on and uh, even though I was transferred we still carried on with the case because you as I said it was about the 19, end of the 1960 season did uh, Newcastle then stop paying you but uh, you were still on their books yeah no no the, the payments were stopped as soon as I, I went to London and you know, found a job down in London so um yeah, no, there was no money. Uh, that was it. They said no pay, no play. Yeah. How long How long did that period go on between the it was time... about eight months. Oh, quite a long time. Yeah, it was a long time. It was a long time, but um, that's when I became a cork salesman. Oh, right. Not much future for in, in, in that, is there? Well, I don't suppose. <laughs> Just depends. <laughs> I was getting more from that than I was from playing football. Really? Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, 20 quid it doesn't take much to be 20 quid, does it? No, that's true. This is, of course, before the um, uh, maximum wage. No, yeah, that was it. 20 quid was the... Uh, you could uh, put 50 players on your staff and you've spent £1,000. So I don't suppose any club was going to go skint in those days, was it? No. How did Arsenal get involved? Because um, you obviously didn't want to re-sign with Newcastle for certain reasons, but uh, did Arsenal immediately come in and said, oh, we want him, and Newcastle said no? Was it like... I think there's a couple of clubs came in, to be honest. I'm, I'm not sure if it wasn't Tottenham. Um, we're also interested, um, but I suppose the, the lure of Arsenal was too much. Hmm. Did they come in right at the beginning, though, as, uh, just as you were starting to fall out with Newcastle, or, or did they sort of come in... Well, they were, they, there was no... Uh, they weren't allowed to approach in those days. No. You had to wait for the club's permission to uh, say you could speak to them. Yeah. I just wondered whether they were sort of um, a little bit put off by this player who was sort of standing up for his rights, or whether they sort of thought that, no, we want this guy anyway. Yeah, probably that was the case. Look, they're obviously showing interest through newspapers and what have you. I mean, that's part of the media game. And, um, you know, it's in the paper all the time. Arsenal are interested, also this. And then eventually, um, I think the FA sort of got hold of Newcastle and said, look, this has gone on too long. It was in the papers every day, sort of thing. And the publicity wasn't very good for for the league, sort of thing. Because you, you were a player very much in demand. You were a high-scoring midfielder for Newcastle. Yeah, I used to score a few goals in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, of course, when you joined Arsenal, um, you, you carried on that uh, tradition. Yeah, I scored a few. Not a lot, but I scored a few. And then I became more midfieldish and more a provider than scorer. That's eventually how I finished. And I suppose assists was my game. <laughs> I remember reading that you went back, you played for Arsenal at, at Newcastle, and Newcastle struggled without you, and some of the, the supporters were slightly bitter and threw apples or food. They weren't too happy, no. There was a, when I went to St James's, I saw all these fruit wagons on the way up, I, what the hell's happening here? They've never sold fruit here before. But of course I soon found out what it was when I took the first corner. <laughs> Yeah, was it the whole apples and or whole pieces of fruit, or was it cut up? Oh, it was no, it was it was the whole lot. I actually picked one up and had a bite. And, oh, <laughs> so, uh, it's just uh, you know, I mean, people get upset. You know, that's what uh, yeah. football is all about. They take a dislike, but the the amazing thing was that I went back to playing Bobby Mitchell's testimonial. He asked me to play in his testimonial a couple of months later. Uh, I said, hey, Bobby, you must be joking. He's a very good friend of mine. I said, well, you must be joking. I mean, look at the last time. The response was, my 
Maybe you won't get anybody there. And he said, no, no, I want you to come. And they lined up before the game in front of the uh, director's box and announced each play, you know, and there was Puskas and uh, there was a whole host of players. Wow. And uh, I couldn't believe it when everybody was cheering. <laughs> so it just shows you how fickle people can be. But uh, there was I helping a friend of mine out, and uh, they appreciate it. That's, uh, that's the way it is in Newcastle. It's a football country. Yeah, I think what they're, they're going to do now, they're not playing. I mean, that's tragic, but uh, mm. these things happen. You still you still follow what their results? Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because you don't live you don't live in in England anymore, is that right? You no, no, I'm in South Africa. Now. You're still in South Africa, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that uh, going back to the court case, it, it wasn't sort of like over in a few weeks or a few months. It it, it dragged on for two or three oh, years. It dragged on until he got to the high courts, and then it was. Just Sort of a three-day job with uh, Justice Wilberforce. That was it. And um, as I say, he ruled against restraint of trade, but his father was also known to be in restraint of trade many, many years before that with the, uh, I suppose, the, the coloured people uh, who bought out of slavery, and uh, that was Justice Wilberforce as well. So oh, he was mm. carrying on his father's good work. Uh, but it was, uh, it was lucky, I suppose, we had him. Uh, he didn't take very long to decide that it was a restraint of trade, and that was it. It made a, a lot of difference to footballers, but it, you didn't personally gain from it at all. It was it was really just more of a matter of, of, of principle. Uh, no, no, I was, I was getting what I was getting before the case. But as I say, the, the, the PFA was... They were a struggling organisation in those days. I mean, we used to pay half a crown a week to the union or something, uh, which didn't amount to a lot of money in the coffers. And, um, you know, I think, they, well, he just said, well, look, we, we'll do the whole hog, we'll go the whole hog. Uh, if it's up to you, if you will, we'll do it. And I said, yeah, that's OK, let's do it. Yeah. Because it was, it was almost uh, you were effectively like slaves. Because uh, it was like it was. We'll call I think. It was yeah. It was a, it was a terrible time to be quite honest. It was um, it, those days. It was directors, king, and players were serfs. And uh, now it's turned around <laughs> exactly the other way. You know. But uh, in those days, it was hard. It was hard. I mean, the hierarchy used to stay at the five star hotels, and the players used to. Scrub it out, you know. Yeah, because the, cause the deal was if you, if at the end of your contract, if you didn't re-sign, they didn't pay you, but you couldn't go anywhere else. That's exactly right. Yeah. And that's uh, that that changed, and, and and as a result of that, as I believe, um, it means that the clubs had to produce proper retain lists and is it, is it transfer lists at the end of a season to. Oh well, you've got to let players know now. You've got to say, "Oh, we're keeping you. There's your contract." Or if you finish your contract, it's up to you. You can go or you can stay, and you negotiate. That's the good part about the contract. So it's what everybody else gets when the working man gets the same options. And that's as a result of the co- of that uh, court case. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And it led on, of course, to the um, change. Osman case came next, and yeah. Then there was no holding anybody. You know, you once your contract was up, you said, "Well, I can go anywhere I want," and there was no fee. That's so right. that's why they sell players now when it gets near the end of the contract. Yeah, whilst they still can. Whilst they can still get some money. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, it's, I mean, there's so much money now anyway. The, the, yeah. That's the least of anybody's worries, you know. It has actually in your lifetime gone, gone from one extreme to the other, hasn't it? 